with general pay win or lose, Shilin asked. Won and lost, Pei Su answered. All the insurgents died to Pei Ming's sword, and amongst them were many veterans who shared decades of friendship with him. The sword Ming Guang had always been used to fight alongside them, and now it had become the weapon to butcher them. Just as the slaughter was coming to an end, and the results of the fight were clear, the ruler of Shu Li judiciously ordered for the bloodied, barely mobile Pei Ming to be surrounded under the offence of treason. Pei Ming was good at fighting wars, but if the battlefield wasn't one of real swords and weapons, he might not be as victorious. He was clearly fighting foes and defending the throne. But in the end, he only won a kill on sight. Pei Ming held that pot in his hand. It wasn't that he didn't hear what they were discussing. Only he didn't have the time to care. I should have known it was you, he said. This is very much your style. Thinking back, it must have been Rong Guang's resentment possessing that broken sword. So thoroughly died in the blood of millions. Connecting with his bitterness had allowed him to survive this long. However, the voice inside the pot was still cold. Your brothers are all long dead. I'm nothing but a sword. Shirian knew that he might never admit to it, and continuing to question would be fruitless. Never mind, General Pei, he said. Pei Ming nodded, and returned the pot to Pei Su. Thus, they subdued two particularly nasty ghosts. Overlooking all others, this could be considered a good start. General Pei and I will continue to go further into Mount Tonglu, Shilian said. But anyway, how about you two? Will you go find Lord Rainmaster? Lord Rainmaster has already gone on ahead to chase after the ghosts who kidnapped the farmers. Pesu said. If we go, it would be the same way, so we are willing to assist General and Your Highness and join you. Peming snapped out of it and knitted his brows slightly. Then we best hurry, he said. The ruler of Yusha isn't a martial god, but went on before us, so they might run into danger ahead. Thus, Shilian picked up Ho Chang, Banyue tucked the two pots away, and the party hastily made way deeper into the thick woods. Since they were still situated on the outer edges of Mount Tonglu, they didn't run into any impressive characters. Most were nothing but weeds. The group wasn't interested in fighting at all, going past them. Some were foolish enough to challenge them, but they were all scared away by Banyue and Pesu's snakes. Thus, after a day of journeying, they had finally left the forest and entered the second level of Mount Tonglu. Here, the woods were growing sparse, the roads growing wider, and there were traces of habitation. Shilin even saw off the side of the road a broken down, blackened little house, which was exceedingly bizarre in this isolated land. He wondered, why are there houses here? Banyue and Pesu both shook their heads to indicate that they didn't know. Pei Ming also replied, I'm afraid this is something you'll have to ask that Lord Ghost King in your arms. After Shilin asked, he had already thought that if Ho Chang was awake, then he'd for sure have the answers to his questions. He looked down. Although Ho Chang's unusually hot body temperature was gradually cooling, his eyes were still shut, and Shilin couldn't help but worry. Pei Ming reminded him, Your Highness, we're about to enter the next level. What we will run into further ahead will be even more powerful. Shall we take a break and wait for Hua Changju to wake? Just then, the group of them had come to a fork in the road. One path headed east, and the other headed west. Shilin contemplated and hummed. The night has deepened. Let's camp here for the night. After travelling for a day, 
it was high time to rest and focus on shielding Hua Chang to help him recover. Wen Yue spoke up. Pei Su Gogo also needs rest. Only then did the group remember that Pei Su was mortal at the moment and required rest as well as sustenance. It was just that he had been silent the whole time. Shilin had cursed shackles on his body and was also the same. But because of his worry for Ho Chang, he had completely forgotten. The group of them thus stopped at this fork in the road and built camp. Ben Yue started the fire and Pei Su went hunting. Shilin saw everyone was busy minding their own business and started staring at Ho Chang's face again. A moment later, instinct made him whip his head around and sure enough, Pei Ming was watching the two of them. The two stared at each other, and Pei Ming huffed a dry laugh. Fine, I'll go away, he said. No, it's fine, Shilin responded. It wasn't like he was thinking of doing anything that shouldn't be seen, so why did he make it sound like he was thieving around? Just then, Wen Yue walked over with a pot for food. Jin Hua, she said. Shilin and Pei Ming both turned their heads. What is it? Shilin asked. That black pot had within it a terrified wild chicken that was tied up. Ban Yue showed them the pot. Pei Su Gogo caught it to have me cook, but I don't know how, she said. After Pei Su hunted, he then went ahead to scout. Pei Ming, on the other hand, seemed to be dissatisfied with Ban Yue, no matter how he looked at her. He berated presumptuously. Aren't you a girl? Fighting and killing all day. Never mind not painting your face. How come you don't even know how to cook? Shelian and Banyue were speechless. Banyue wasn't a delicate girl raised in a normal household and had not a clue of how Pei Ming judged beauty. She couldn't understand his words and was puzzled. As for Shelian, he had pretty much figured out things by now. Pei Ming was someone hard to describe when it came to women. Put it down, Ban Yue. I'll teach you, Shilian said. Ban Yue already deeply admired him, so she happily followed his instructions. An incense time later, Shilian was pulling the colourful feathers off of the wild chicken, and Pei Ming raised his blood-soaked hands. He lamented, The chicken killing general and the feather plucking crown prince can now be considered famous sights too. Shilian had watched him kill the chicken with his bare hands, a bloody and grimy sight. General Pei, couldn't you have used a knife or something? It would have been cleaner. And is there one? Pei Ming retorted. Just as the word left his lips, they both glanced at the two pots sitting on the ground on the side. Rong Guang who was inside the pot, seemed to have noticed the two peculiar looks, and the pot shuddered violently. Get out of here. Scram far away. Careful. I might just smear venom on my blade and poison you all. The two hurried away. Once they were sure that the pot couldn't hear, Pei Ming shook his head and said to Shilian, And he keeps denying it. He's always had that temper. Of course it's him. Shilin also heard how Rong Guang cursed at Pei Ming and had long grown an odd sense of sympathy. I understand completely, he said. I have a little cousin who's somewhat like General Rong. He knows more curses but doesn't know how to do much else. At least Rong Guang could help Pei Ming fight battles. If Chi Rong was to go help Shilin fight battles, then even before Shilin was killed by enemies, he'd already have been ruined by Chi Rong. Pei Ming seemed to have imagined what a Rong Guang, who only knew how to curse but didn't know how to fight, was like, and remarked earnestly. That's indeed frightening. Shilian threw the now fully plucked wild chicken back into the pot, filled it with water, and started cooking it atop the fire, adding some wild fruits or herbs 
every now and then to add flavor. Vanue copied him and tried very hard to find anything that looked edible to stuff into the pot. Pei Ming didn't know what they were doing, but since he'd never entered the kitchen himself, he didn't see any problem, so he helped by adding firewood to the campfire. Your Highness, I've always had a question I wanted to ask you, but since we weren't acquainted, it wasn't appropriate to ask, Pei Ming said. It's true that they weren't close. Before, Xilin's impression of Pei Ming was pretty much a physically skilled but ill-minded womanizer, and they'd even faced each other a couple of times. Yet now that they'd crossed paths a few times, unknowingly, his opinion had changed, and their relationship could be considered somewhat friendlier. By all means, General Pei, please ask, he said. You've been banished twice, with two cursed shackles on your person, Pei Ming said. After you ascended for the third time, you could have asked the emperor to remove them. So why didn't you? Shailin watched as Banyue thought really hard before cheerfully pulling out a few long, wine-red scorpion snakes and putting them into the bubbling pot. He replied easily. Then, General Pei, I've also got a question I want to ask you. Please, Pei Ming said. How come, after you snapped Mingguang, you never forged a new sword as a spiritual device? Pei Ming raised his brows. What an unpleasant question. She then matched his expression. Likewise, he said. The two chuckled a bit. Suddenly, Pei Ming said, I never thought it was a beautiful tale. I get you, She then said. He was about to speak, then suddenly... There was movement behind him. His heart jumped, looking back. Sun Lang? he asked. Sure enough, Hua Chang had sat up. Xilin was both surprised and delighted and immediately went over to help hold him up by the shoulders. Sun Lang, you're awake. You seem bigger. Indeed, before Hua Chang only looked to be a little older than ten, but now he appeared to be at least thirteen or fourteen. When he spoke, his voice also changed from that of a child to the slightly raspy voice of a teen. Yes, thank you, Goga, for giving me relief, he replied. What a joyous occasion, Pei Ming commented. No need to thank me, I. Shailin started to reply before he noticed there was the word relief. His smile froze, wondering internally. It's not what I think it is, is it? The next second, Hua Chang grabbed his shoulders. He said darkly, Your Highness, listen to me. Something is coming rapidly from the east. You must get away for now. Shilian was taken aback. The two both looked to the east, like they could see through the endless black night and see any figure skulking in the darkness. Although Shilin didn't sense anything, still, he said, Very well, we'll take leave. Where to? Pei Ming asked. The fork in the road had only two parts, and Shilin said, The west. Banyue grabbed that cooking pot over the flames, looking like she was going to bring it along, and said, Hisu Goga hasn't returned yet. Just as she spoke, a shadow came hurrying from the road to the west. It was Pei Su who had returned from scouting. General, don't go down this road. There's a large number of ghosts coming this way right now. How many? Ho Chang demanded. Pei Su noticed that the one who asked was Ho Chang and was stunned for a moment. Judging by the tremors of the ground, at least 500. As a martial god, unless there was absolutely no other choice, retreat would never be considered. Pei Ming demanded, Do we go east or west? Hua Chang said with conviction, West. Xilian also answered, West. 
For some reason, although there were more ghosts coming from the west, and not a single shadow in the east, Shirin's instincts told him that the west must be the safer choice than the east. Without further ado, the group hastily went on their way. Shirin was already prepared to kill without hesitation should they run into the first wave. But after running for several miles, not a single movement was detected, and he was rather puzzled. General Pei Jr., when and where did you hear that over 500 ghosts were approaching? He asked. Just nearby here, Pei Su said. At the time, they were only five to six miles behind me and were going very fast. Then this is strange, Shinian said. The group continued to run to the west, and those 500 or so ghosts were running eastward. Both parties were fast, so they should have bumped into each other head on by now. So why was there not a single ghost, and not even any movement? Little Pei wouldn't have heard wrong, Pei Ming said. Maybe they went back the way they came. I don't think that's likely, Pei Su said. Because their pace was really fast, it sounded as if they were running for their lives, Hua Chang said. Suddenly, Shilin stopped in his step. Not just him, but the entire group stopped. Because just ahead of them, there was a field of corpses that was blocking their way. Those corpses, some were beasts, some were men. Bodies all shapes and sizes. There were even battered souls, wisps of black smoke and ghost fires floating in the air. An exceedingly chilling sight. Shilin squatted down to check and said they really were running for their lives. They just didn't succeed. After Pei Su heard them, he immediately turned back to inform Shilin and the others. And it was right after he left that something had pursued and killed them all in one go. It's the work of one person, Ho Chang said. Shilin nodded. If both parties were great in number, then the kill wouldn't be this clean, and the battle wouldn't have ended so straightforwardly. And to have killed over 500 ghosts and monsters in such a short period of time, no doubt it was something stronger than the swift, life-extinguishing blade, so it seemed it was one they should keep an eye on. Bunny was said, holding her soup pot. I hope Lord Rainmaster didn't choose this path. No need to worry. My lord has the guardian steed, Pesu said. Right at the same time, Shilin heard a strange chattering noise from not far away. When he went over to look, there was a skull whose jaws were chattering. The noise came from it. When it noticed someone had discovered it, it cried again terrified. Mercy! I'll never come again. I want to go back. I want to go home. Shilin cupped it with both his hands and said gently, Don't be scared. We're only passing by. Can you tell us just what exactly happened here? That skull's jaw chattered as it bit out. You hear your passers by? Don't keep going onward anymore. There's someone really scary ahead, counting us. He's already killed. Over a thousand ghosts, and he's still dissatisfied. He's still, he's still. Over a thousand. That was way more than they had imagined. Shilin asked, Who is it that you speak of? Do you know what his name is? Or his title? Or what he looks like? No, no, the skull said. I didn't see very clearly. It didn't take long for him to kill us. I only faintly saw it was a black clad man, very young, his face very pale. Sounds a little troublesome, Pei Ming said. Your Highness, Hua Chengju, are you sure we should be heading westward right now and not east? The skull heard and shrieked. The east won't do either, not the east. What's happened in the east? Shilin asked. That skull said. 
We didn't dare go east, which is why we chose the west. Because on the road to the east, there's a white-clad young man who within a day has already killed over 2,000 ghosts. He's far more terrifying than this one in the west. Thank you.